What if I told you that Shanks is in fact a former Celestial Dragon and that it's been hinted at ever since Dress Rosa? Have you ever wondered about the direct parallels with Shanks, Corazon, and Doflamingo? Well, if you haven't, then stay tuned because I promise this theory will blow your mind. If you like Shanks and the mysteries behind him, then you're going to love this theory. Wizard of Oz here today and I'll be discussing everything we've seen on Shanks thus far, his direct parallels with the Don Quixote family, Blackbeard, Goldie Roger, and Norse mythology. Hope you're as excited as I am about this and now let's get into it. Shanks, the man who single-handedly stopped a war, well I guess with his crew too, but his name value alone was enough to have Sengo who command the marines to stop the fighting. The man who has the name value to stop the war isn't a beast, but is actually somewhat a civil pirate who's willing to talk to people about disagreements or to discuss certain events. For example, we see Shanks discuss with Whitebeard what's going on with Ace. He tells him his thoughts on the situation and tells him what he believes Whitebeard should do. This seems to be a common thing for Shanks, since he's even able to meet up with other people in the world that are even higher than Whitebeard the Five Elders. I'll discuss more on the importance of him stopping a war later on in the video and its importance to him being a celestial dragon. The five elders have brought up that Shanks doesn't seem to be interested in world conquest which shows that they know a bit about it. Maybe this is hinting that they've met before the meeting at the reverie. This scene is one of the most, if not the most, iconic scenes in all of One Piece because it shocked every single reader. How would Shanks be able to casually walk into Pangaea Castle and talk with the five elders? Also, why was he wearing a cloak as if he was trying to stay hidden and not be seen by anyone? What if he was able to meet them because he is a celestial dragon, or at least comes from a family that was once celestial dragons? I'm pretty sure that we've all thought about Shanks being a former celestial dragon at least once in our life ever since his meeting to discuss a certain pirate. Most people speculate that he was going to discuss either Luffy or Blackbeard. I'll get more into these characters as well later on in the video because those with the D in their name lay out a big hint on Shanks. Shanks' ability to even meet up with the five elders shows us that he may have some royal blood in him. This has been told to us since Dress Rosa. Yes, in Dress Rosa, Oda basically told us that Shanks is a celestial dragon through the Don Quixote family. Shanks Don Quixote? <laughs> Just kidding, I don't think that's actually going to be his last name, but he'll probably have a last name connected with the world nobles. Okay, so now you may say, how does the Don Quixote family prove that Shanks is a celestial dragon? Well, because Corazon and Shanks are direct parallels with each other. Corazon is the Shanks to Law, and Shanks is the Corazon to Luffy. Corazon is a grown man that a kid Law looked up to. Shanks is the person who a kid Luffy looked up to. In Law's backstory, Corazon steals arguably one of the most important devil fruits in the story from the world government since they were gonna buy it, and gives it to Law. In Luffy's backstory, Shanks steals arguably the most important devil fruit in the whole story from the world government and doesn't necessarily give it to Luffy, but Luffy ends up eating it because the Shanks pirates left open a treasure with the fruit in it. In Law's backstory, Corazon ends up sacrificing himself to save Law. In Luffy's backstory, Shanks sacrifices his arm to save Luffy, Law ended up being inspired to be just like Corazon, half pirate, half marine. Luffy ended up being inspired to be just like Shanks, being a pirate that fights for his friends. Law ended up calling his pirate crew name after Corazon, the heart pirates. By the way, Corazon means heart in Spanish. Then, Luffy ended up calling his pirate crew name after Shanks, or something that represents the next time he'll see Shanks, which is the Straw Hat. Corazon is a good former celestial dragon that helps someone with the will of D. So I guess Shanks might be a good former celestial dragon that also helps someone with the will of D. More parallels between the two would be that Corazon has a brother that depicts a clown since Doflamingo's nickname is Joker. Shanks has a brother, or at least someone that is like a brother to him, in the way that Ace is Luffy's brother, that also depicts a clown. Another parallel would be that Corazon has a brother that became one of the seven warlords, while Shanks also has someone like a brother who became one of the seven warlords. Corazon doesn't like Doflamingo and they don't get along anymore since Corazon betrayed him, kind of like how Shanks and Buggy don't get along anymore. Except, of course, one of them didn't, you know. <laughs> Oh! <laughs>
while Corazon was a member of the Don Quixote Pirates. It was a member of a pirate crew that had its left eye crossed out on its Jolly Roger. The red hair pirates also have their left eye crossed out. Going back to Law and Luffy, the two kids that Corazon and Shanks inspired, they even formed an alliance showing that the two of them are connected in some way. With all this being said, Corazon and Shanks almost have identical roles in Law and Luffy's backstories. Since they do, it pretty much points to the fact that they may be very similar themselves. They may both be celestial dragons that became pirates and didn't grow up to be evil like the other world nobles. Remember how in Dress Rosa we randomly found out about Doflamingo being a celestial dragon, which was one of the biggest One Piece reveals. We also found out about Law having the will of D, which shows that there's still many things that we haven't learned about. Even with characters that were frequently shown before the reveals, like Law and Dofi, we never knew about their true nature and name value. We still don't know almost anything about Shanks or who he actually is, so I think Oda has a big surprise and reveal coming. Another big thing with Shanks' character and him being a former celestial dragon is his natural enemy. Obviously, good celestial dragons like Corazon and possibly Shanks can get along with some people with the will of D, but that doesn't mean that they'll get along with all of them. Maybe they only get along with the good ones, for example Luffy, Roger, and Law. Since their natural enemy is still going to be someone from the D clan, that means that it's fate for Shanks and Blackbeard to clash it out in the end. Blackbeard is not a good human being by any standards, and since he does have the will of D, it's almost it's just natural for him to be Shanks' biggest enemy. Shanks seems to hate Blackbeard or at least is very concerned for his existence in the world. He even tells Whitebeard to tell Ace to stop going after him since he knows it won't end well with the power that Teach holds. Maybe it's Blackbeard's destiny to either kill Shanks or to at least defeat him, and then Luffy will have to fight for his old friend. Another connection with Shanks being a celestial dragon is the fact that they're known to be gods. I don't find it much of a coincidence that Shanks might be a god of the world, since he is based off of an actual god, the god of war, Tyr. In Norse mythology, Tyr is the god of war and has almost an identical resemblance to what Shanks is. Tyr offered his arm to a wolf to bring balance to the realms, kind of like how Shanks offered his arm to bet on the future generations. Tyr is also known to be nicknamed the one-handed man or the one-armed god. The best connection to Shanks and Tyr would be that Tyr used his wisdom and power to stop wars instead of start them, just like how Shanks literally stopped the war at Marineford. Although Tyr is called the god of war in Norse mythology, that does doesn't necessarily mean that he fought wars. Instead, he was actually called that because he stopped them. He was a god of peace and was known to be the most courageous among the gods. Shanks tries to keep peace within the world of One Piece, which shows how powerful and respected he is among everyone. The last thing I want to discuss about Shanks is his origin and his intentions in the world. I believe that Roger may have taken an infant Shanks from God Valley. Roger tells Garp in a Marineford flashback that our unborn child is innocent. He tells Garp how his unborn child isn't a bad person, and it's not fair to take anything out on a baby. I believe this may foreshadow Roger saving a child from the legendary God Valley incident. The infant child ended up being Shanks, a celestial dragon who was as innocent as any other baby. Maybe as God Valley was going down, Roger realized that even though he hates the celestial dragons, an infant child is just like any other infant child and can be taught a different ideology than what his family believes in. Shanks is 39 years old which would make him an infant or a baby at the God Valley incident. In the Odin flashback we see Roger bring up how he hasn't seen a baby in ages and then Ray Lee says that it reminds him of the old days. This could possibly be hinting at Shanks being the baby that was on the crew and possibly even Buggy as well. Just like Roger saved a baby with a family that had bad blood, his own son was saved by someone as well. Now maybe Shanks eventually found out that he was a celestial dragon, which led him not to care about finding the One Piece. It seems like Shanks believes Luffy is Joy Boy and will be the one to find the One Piece ever since he ate the fruit. Shanks even decided to give him the straw hat which is dear to his heart since it belonged to his former captain and the king of the pirates, Goldie Roger. I also wonder if Shanks learned about the giant straw hat in Mary Joyce or heard of its existence. This isn't very likely considering how deeply hidden it is, but it almost seems like Shanks has something on the world government. I don't see how he's able to walk in their castle right before the reverie is taking place, especially when they know that he's the one who stole the gum gum fruit from them. I also don't see how the world government wouldn't find out about Luffy having the gum gum fruit throughout the whole story. I mean, why would they not check the pirate crew that is literally called the Straw Hats? I think Shanks might have something to do with them not going after Luffy. Maybe he blackmailed them or simply told them that he'll go to war with them for Luffy or I don't know but something about the situation just seems strange. I believe Shanks realized that it's not his fate to find the One Piece but actually Luffy's and then protected Luffy while being behind the scenes. 
This pretty much wraps up my theory on why I believe Shanks is a former celestial dragon and how Oda has hinted at it since Dress Rosa. What do you guys think about this theory? Let me know any of your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you like this video and like One Piece content like this, then please remember to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and remember to have a great day.